Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will discuss about the thermodynamic database which deals with the delta G or delta T m that we discussed earlier right using different experimental techniques as well as how to identify the residues which are important to stabilize a protein. So, in the previous lecture, we discussed about protein stability. What is protein stability? It is a free energy difference between Folded, folded and unfolded states, right. So, what is the value of this uh, free energy change? 5 to 20. It is marginal, it is about 5 to 20 kilo cal per mole. So, there are various experimental techniques, right, which can provide the data on the stability. For example, uh, thermal denaturation or denatural denaturation. There are several experimental techniques such as circular dichroism, fluorescence spectroscopy, differential scanning calorimetry. So, we can use these experiments to obtain the data on protein stability. Then we discussed about the contribution of different interactions for example, hydrophobic interaction, electrostatic interaction, hydrogen bonds, Van der Waals interactions, disulfide bonds right in the folded structure of the protein as well as entropy contribution to the unfolded state. Then we combine these two types of interactions and we get the net free energy change between the unfolded and folded state and compare this data with the experimental data. How to get the hydrophobic free energy? From the delta sigma. From this uh, atomic solution parameters as well as the solvent accessible surface area of atoms in the folded and folded states. Likewise, the uh, electrostatic interactions you can obtain from ion pairs or you can see from this Coulomb's law. You can get the hydrogen bonds as well as the Van der Waals interactions right based on this uh, distance. So, now if we find that the free energy difference is marginal and the protein is stable for, under, for the function. And if you look into the protein structures, whether we are able to identify the important residues right, which are stabilizing the protein. So, there are various methods to identify these residues right? and one of the methods which you can obtain from computational aspects is based on the interactions which influence the stability of your protein. If you look into these protein structures right earlier we discussed the hydrophobicity is one of the factors right which stabilize protein structures. Hence, we use various interactions and various features the based on the hydrophobic character like this how can we quantify the hydrophobic behavior of residues in a protein and long range interactions this will tell you the information on how far two residues in a protein are interacting with each other right, whether to make the long range interactions or the short range contacts and how many contacts one residue can make. So, we discussed about some features using long range interactions for example, long range order or multiple contact index and conservation. So, conservation can be obtained from the sequences, sequences right you can if you have the amino acid sequence then you can obtain the homologous sequences from the homologous sequences you can see any position is accommodated by the specific residue. If we, there are various features, so the main features we consider are the hydrophobic character of residues and long range interactions as well as the conservation. If you look into these three features, these hydrophobic character and long range interactions we can obtain from protein 3D structures, right? This is obtained from 3D structures. So, for the conservation, we can get from amino acid sequence information. We can all uh, explain how to get these features and based on these features how we obtain the data right which can stabilize a particular protein. So, step 1 we need to compute the values of these parameters for all the residues in a protein. For example, a protein contains 100 residues for each residue we can calculate the parameters based on these specific characters like hydrophobic character, long range interactions as well as the conservation score. So, in the like hydrophobic character, we already discussed about the surrounding hydrophobicity. We can use the surrounding hydrophobicity to quantify the hydrophobic behavior of each residue in protein environment. Then likewise, we can 
calculate long range order based on the contacts between two residues which are close in space and they are distant in the sequence. We use this information to calculate the long range order. Stabilization center is also similar to long range order. This also involves long range interactions. You can see some cluster of residues and these residues are having a contact between among these two groups. Like the conservation score, it depends upon the location of residues which are occupied the same position but in different homologous sequences. I already have discussed the development of these parameters just I will uh, outline again right how to get these parameters and how we identify the residues which are stabilizing in protein structures. The surrounding heterophobicity can tell you the heterophobic behavior of each residue in protein environment. How to get this heterophobic surrounding heterophobicity and for each residue you can construct a sphere of radius, radius r here you can see the radius is 8 angstrom and identify the residues which are occurring within this limit of 8 angstrom and we have the experimental value for each residues which is surrounded by a central residue where this is a central residue. Then we add the values and finally you get the surrounding heterophobicity of the central residue like for example if Hj if j is t we can obtain 3 1 in here okay you can obtain the values in summation of Nij right, which are the residues right of type i which is surrounded by residue j for example, how many alanines or valines right surrounded by this 3 1 n multiplied by the heterophobic index of that i the residue for example, 5 i's 5 then you can multiply with the value for the isolation 5 times with this heterophobicity values. So, here Hj is the central residue and Nij is the number of residues of type i around j and Hi is the experimental values either you can take from the octanol water experiments or the ethanol water experiments right. So, you can use the values. So, finally, this will tell you the heterophobic behavior in protein environment. So, in this case if we take a protein the values for same residues at different positions are different. So, we can use this PDB param right to obtain the surrounding heterophobicity just you go to PDB param I discussed in the earlier classes and you give your input protein name which protein you want to identify the heterophobicity of residues. So, here the PDB is for MBN it is my globin and you have to uh, click on surrounding heterophobicity. Once you do this right you will get the values for all the residues in a protein you can see the surrounding heterophobicity of each residues. For example, what is the heterophobicity of tyrosine 103? 19.64 right. So, if you look into this surrounding heterophobicity values some residues are high in surrounding heterophobicity and some of them are less. Can you find some of the residues which are very high in surrounding heterophobicity? For example, if you put a range of 20 kilocal per mole, leucine, this more, and you can see isoleucine and alanine. Okay. So, these residues, right, 104, 107, 1010, okay, these residues they are high in heterophobicity. So, these values will tell you which residues are having more contacts and which residues are enriched in surrounding heterophobicity right in protein environment. So, now we have one parameter the surrounding heterophobicity you can calculate from any 3 d structures. Then the second feature we can use long range order right what is long range order? Number of contacts greater than so, you can see the contacts which are close in space far away in the sequence. So, we have two parameters we need to fix one is the in space. So, here we use the distance of 8 angstrom and the distance in the sequence. So, here also we can vary different distances and here we use the cutoff of 12 residues. You can identify the residues and see which residues pairs are far apart at least 12 residues. So, for example, if you see this graph that I showed this earlier, if we take the 3 and 152 and if we take the i if this i if this is equal to j then you can see j equal to 98. One, uh, for example, if you take this one 153 in this case i j i minus j this is equal to 1. So, n i j equal to 0 because we need i minus j equal to at least 12. So, if j equal to 98 this is the j then you can see i minus j this is equal to 154 right in this case this is equal to 52 plus 54 this is greater than 12 in this case n i j n i j equal to 1. So, for each residue you can see how many residues which are far apart at least 12 residues. 
we take 152 how many residues which are forming the long range contacts 98 95 and it is 94 in this case you can see nij this is equal to 1 2 3 right you can find it then if you have the nij we know the number of residues in your protein and you can calculate this long range order using this equation right this is equal to 3 then 3 by for example 153 then you can get the values so you can use the pdb theorem to obtain the values so here if you give the same uh, pdb id and you give the long range order and if you submit so you will get the numbers if you see the numbers many cases it is zero why this is it zero only local interactions only local interactions many because for, for mbn is a myoglobin it's all alpha proteins it contains mainly alpha helices this is the reason why uh, this value is zero some cases you can see higher number 0 0.026 or 0 0.013 so if you look at the different structures if you take different proteins and you can see the variation of these numbers based on the number of contacts right if it for example if you take all beta proteins these proteins you can see several residues are influenced with long range contacts and you see the higher values right in the case of this alpha all, all beta proteins so we discussed about the surrounding heterophobicity and we discussed about long range order and stabilization center is another property this also mainly from the information regarding long range interactions so here if you see the two residues are the part of stabilization centers right if they are involved in long range interactions they find this some cluster of residues which can form these contacts and then see whether these clusters are uh, close to each other at least uh, with the 10 residues so in this case you can use this server sciide so to identify the uh, stabilization centers it asks the, the pdb code right or you can upload your pdb file then the asking for this stabilization center right we can send see from particular chain or if you have more chains you can also see from the uh, different types of chains so here this is the result so we can get the text as well as for the graphical and here we see the chain information and the receive 17 is involved in stabilization center because this and this 27 they are having several residues in the center and they are interacting with each other likewise for each pairs they have see they are forming the stabilization centers now the fourth uh, property that we use conservation score Right, because conservation score is also important for the stability because it maintains the same position from different homologous sequences right already we discussed about the calculation of conservation score right what is the main uh, information if you did require for calculating the conservation score multiple sequence alignment, multiple sequence alignment right so for example if you have your own sequence you get the homologous sequences under the multiple sequence alignment and from that you can see which residues are highly conserved right for example here if you see this one right you can see this highly conserved all the sequences right it is it is mainly with leucine or valine right we discussed about the various methods how to calculate the conservation score right the simplest one you can see the f u of i because unweighted frequency in this case you can calculate by n a of i by n of i this is the number of positions right how many uh, amino acids of type i which are present in any particular position this is any is amino acid i is particular particular position so for each case you can see the conservation uh, any particular position i you can see fefi in the logarithmic of fefi or this a equal to 1 to 20 20 amino acid residues for any particular positions i varies from 1 to the n what is number n is the number of residues in the protein right fine then i show this picture right so some residues are highly conserved right many the, the residues which are uh, shown in magenta color right uh, this one the, this kindly uh, conserved and the one which is in blue this these are variable so you can get these numbers between 0 to 9 in this case 9 is highly conserved and 0 is highly flexible that is very very ones fine so now we can calculate all the parameters try take any uh, structure we can see the residue this is obtained from the pdb this exercise coordinates here you have the sequence here so for each residue you can calculate the conservation score and surrounding heterophobicity right long range order and the stabilization center so this is called we can say here surrounding heterophobicity so now here we give the position right different type, types of amino acid residues so here this is the conservation score and here we have the heterophobicity values we, we obtain from the uh, pdb param 
and LRO this also you can obtain from the PDB param and finally, sublation center that also you can see this is 1 or 0. If it is involved in the sublation center that is 1, if it is not involved in the sublation center then it is 0. So, now we have the values. Now, the issue is we need to identify the residues which are involved in sublation in the stability. So, we can try with the different cutoff values right with these cutoff values when you identify the residues that should match with the experimental data. So, in that case you can uh, change your threshold right. If you take a particular threshold for example, surrounding hydrophobic is more than 20 and LRO is more than 0 0.02, stabilization center equal to more than equal to 1 and conservation score is more than equal to 6. That means, that residue should be highly conserved among the homologous sequences and that should have more number of contacts and there is a highly hydrophobic nature. It may lose some specific residues for example, the charge residues. Right. Also, some charge residues are also having uh, uh, this type of uh, 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 more number of trusted values. I will show in the data. If you do these conditions, then if you see these numbers, which are the residues which satisfy all the conditions? Consideration should be more than 6. In this case, almost all the residues they are having more than 6. And if you see the stabilization center that is more than equal to 1, so everything is fine. So, then you look for the uh, Hydrophobicity, what is the range we put? More than 20, right? If it is more than 20, then, they, then this will satisfy the condition. The long range order? 0 .02. More than 0 0.02. So, you can see these two values, but only this one will satisfy all the conditions. Then we can say alanine 110, okay, this is the an important residue for the stability of the particular protein. As you can see that uh, this is the kind of residues which are stabilizing this protein structure. So, now we want to compare whether you identify the residues which are comparable to the experiments or not right. So, we take a set of proteins for us we discussed about the tubarrel proteins. These proteins they have diverse sequence identity, but they have a common fold if you see they are having the some common fold. If you see this uh, the alpha helices right and they can see inner part that is mainly beta sand and if you look at the sequence they are alternate to each other one is helix one is strand helix strand and so on. Then we check the data whether uh, you can find any residues which are identified stabilizing or experimentally identified. So, another case is glycine 229 this is here. So, this residue is identified as stabilizing residues because they did the uh, cytochromatization experiments and if you do that if you destabilize the protein then you can say these residues are important for stability. So, here the red ones we identified these are all the uh, residues which are mainly uh, involved in stability. So, glycine 229 you identified this involved in the stabilizing residues. Then after some time after uh, 2004 in uh, they identified that 16126 this also play important role in stability. So, here I can see 16126 that is also here right and this residue is also identified as the stabilizing residues in this particular protein. Likewise, you can see the several uh, residues compared to the experiments I can see these residues uh, are important for stability right. Another factor to see whether a residue is important for stability is the B factor. So, in this case if it is rigid then if the residues are highly stable. So, we uh, calculated the normalized B score I discussed earlier right this equal to B minus uh, B mean this is the average of these uh, B factors and B sigma is a deviation. Right, when you normalize if it is equal to more than equal to 1 this is flexible and less than it equal to 1 this is rigid. In this figure I showed this figure earlier see several residues are in blue okay, this have the low values right and some of them are red and yellow right they have, they have the more uh, more uh, motions right depending upon the B factors right. So, here you give the numbers so some of the very high they are flexible and here in this case uh, they are rigid. Fine. So, now I identified some residues I show the data for some of the proteins. So, okay, these are the PDB code right 4 letter code and see the stabilizing residues. So, for example, glycine 139, valine 185 right leucine, isoleucine so on several so residues. So, they are the 4 parameters for surrounding hydrophobicity, long range order, stabilization center and the conservation score. So, from all these numbers you can identify this for these are all very high it met all the conditions. And if you see the B factors and most of them for example, if you 91 out of 957 
right 931 out of 957 this is 97 percent. Here you see the B factors they are negative indicating that they are having one among the residues which are having the lowest atomic displacement in the corresponding proteins. We can calculate the average B factor. So, here you can see they are having the B factors negative. So, they are uh, important for the stability and most of the residues for example, 97 percent of the residues which are having the negative values. So, then you can see that okay, these are also probably a stabilization residues in protein structures. So, now you want to see among the stabilization residues are there any particular preference of residues right to be in the it involved in the stability right as is expected because we use surrounding hydrophobicity is one of the factors. So, most of the hydrophobic residues they are important for the stability because if you uh, mutate these residues with the charge ones right this will destabilize the protein that is fine. So, we, we got the information if this is the frequency of occurrence of residues in the stability in stability. So, valine isolation is very high it is more than 10 relatively with other, other uh, residues and here are, you can also see that some of the charged residues they are also involved in the stabilizing residues. For example, if you see this arginine glutamic acid so here also you can see the preference right, but the less compared to the hydrophobic residues this will tell you not only the hydrophobic residues, but also the charge and polar residues are also involved right to stabilize these particular proteins. Then we group the residues like a hydrophobic and the sulfur containing and the aromatic polar and charge. Here also you can see the preference of these residues right to be involved in the stabilizing residues. Then we see whether these residues are present in which any secondary structure preference. So, mostly we can see the beta sheets and followed by this alpha helices and other residues needs to be expected because the beta strand residues which are highly interacting with the other residues this is the reason why many residues are identified in beta strands. If you see this figure you can see that the stabilized residues are mainly in the beta strands, but there are several cases in alpha helices too. Now, if you look into these different types of stabilization residues and the question is okay, there are several residues in different beta sheets whether these contacts or these interactions are forming a network or they try to have a network of interactions. Likewise, if you see some, uh, some uh, students they go together they will form some network of uh, students together always they go together. So, we check that and interestingly found that some many cases S1, S2, S3 denotes the number of strands this is strand 1, strand 2 up to strand 8. So, the, the residues we mentioned are the stabilizing residues mainly if you see in strand 7 we have 6 stabilizing residues compared with strand 8 and strand 5 right strand 5 has 5, 4 and 8 has 2. So, but these residues they are interacting with each other they form strike a network of interactions mainly if you see this S5 to S8 you can see several residues which are interacting together right form a network of interactions this is also help to stabilize the protein and maintain the stability of several particular proteins. So, how to get this information? So, in this case we develop a server this is called the SRIDE right that is stabilizing residues in protein structures right it takes a PDB code or you can upload your uh, structures if you obtain the data from the MD simulations right then we can uh, specify the chain if you want to get this stabilizing residues from a particular chain you can specify the chain or you can uh, you put a star if they take the first chain or all the all the all the chains. Then threshold values this is not fixed because we give the option to select the threshold values right you can use the E value mainly for the alignment and the conservation score uh, long range order or hydrophobicity or, or stabilization center. So, you can give these values and then you can get the residues which are identified as stabilizing residues in any protein structures. When they developed this program they started with the timbaral proteins because they are uh, having specific character then extended to the different types of proteins. Now, you can use for any proteins you can give this uh, threshold values and give your PDB ID then you can get the stabilizing residues for any particular protein. So, we obtain the stabilizing residues and one way we compared with the B factors then we can also compare the stabilizing residues if experimental data are known if several experimental delta G or delta T M values are known upon mutation right then you can collect all the destabilizing mutants okay then in this case if you mutate your residue that will destabilize the protein and see the mutants which are having significant deviation for example if you take 1 kilocal per mole or 2 kilocal per mole 
and see whether these residues are also identified as tabulation residues using this uh, procedures. In this case, it requires the experimental data, right? It is good to have a unique resource, right, to collect this data and the form of a database. And if you have a database, you can query the database and you can get these residues which are destabilizing upon any particular mutations, and this can also you can verify whether these residues are uh, destabilizing a protein so that this is very important for stabilizing a particular protein. 